Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back. I want to go through the appendices at the end of the book, and in particular in this lecture I want to start with Appendix A. So this is about Jacobians, inverses of matrices and eigenvalues. And you've seen most of these concepts before, I believe, and I just wanted to collect them together in one place in a form that would be useful for doing the problems at the end of each chapter. So one thing that uh, I have found over the years that students are, at this level, are a bit shaky on or or is the notion of a Jacobian, and I want to talk about that to begin with. So a Jacobian is just the first derivative of a vector-valued function of a vector variable. And the simplest example where we see that arising will be a two-vector, x and y, and uh, the vector value is also two-dimensional. So h of xy has two components, f of x, y, g of x, y. So we want to compute the Taylor expansion of h about a point x naught, y naught, and we will see that the first order term is the Jacobian derivative, a two by two matrix, and you can see the two by two matrix structure from considering dimensionality of this object. But now let's see how we do it. All right, now you know how to Taylor expand a function of a single variable, and that's what you all you need to do here, except you do it twice. And here's what I mean by that. Let's look at each component of H, F and G, separately. So F of x naught plus h, y naught plus k, we want to Taylor expand that in h and k about x naught, y naught. So what we do is we view one variable is fixed, y naught plus k, Taylor expand in x naught, sorry, Taylor expand in x about x naught, and then we Taylor expand in the other variable, Taylor expand in y about y naught. And if we do that, just retaining the first order terms, this is what we get. Okay, now you do this again for the second component. G. And you put them together in a, you can put them, you can see how they will fit together in a matrix notation. And that's the Jacobian matrix. It's the matrix of partial derivatives in this particular order. There's a pattern, and you get used to the pattern. And that's the first derivative of this vector, two-vector-valued function of two variables. All right, now we do a lot of linearization. We need to get, get the eigenvalues of the matrix associated with the linearization to determine stability and so on. We need to invert the matrix. Almost all of the examples I've used here are two, two by two because I, I like examples where you can compute things by hand. And uh, so two by two matrices, we can do essentially everything by hand. So consider this general matrix, A6, A, B, C, D. The inverse, well, we know how to do that. We leave the off-diagonal elements alone, but we put a minus sign in front of them, and we swap the diagonal elements and divide by the determinant. So that tells you immediately that there, the inverse does not exist unless the determinant is non-zero. You can check this, multiply A by inverse, and see that you do get the identity matrix. Now to find eigenvalues of A, we do the usual thing. Determine it at a minus lambda times the identity matrix equals zero. We'll get a quadratic equation. 
to solve. It'll have two roots. But the nice thing about that, you can verify this directly, that the two eigenvalues have the form of the trace, which is some of the diagonal elements, trace of the matrix divided by 2, plus or minus, they're two eigenvalues, 1 half times the square root of the quantity, trace squared minus 4 times the determinant. Now this is nice because it's just character, you just characterize the eigenvalues for 2 by 2 matrices in terms of the trace and the determinant, and you can, de you can determine the nature of the stability by the sign of the trace and the determinant or if one or the other equals zero. And that's done in a number of the problems in the um, text earlier on. So this is a very handy formula um, for two by two systems. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about uh, Appendix A. I think you'll find these ideas useful. And next time I will talk about Appendix B. Bye for now.